On this episode of RC Kicks, we'll be going over all the Tamiya cars that I have in the RC Kicks collection. So stay tuned, it's going to be a long one. Hi and welcome to RC Kicks on today's show. Well, we're going to be wrapping up the collection video that I started the other day. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here. Go check that out. Basically, that's every car that was in the collection apart from Tamiya. So on this video, we're going to cover every Tamiya car that I have in the collection. Yeah, that's going to be another half an hour video. <laughs> right, okay, first we're going to kick off with this. This is a reasonably new released Mark II Escort. Now, this normally comes on the uh, MF01X chassis, but I have changed it to the M08. Apart from that, it is basically a standard body that's been put on a different chassis. And uh, I did a video on this and I did a comparison video between the box uh, chassis and this chassis. Obviously this is completely different. This is a much more uh, track focused chassis and uh, I really like it. And I've run it a few times. It needs a bit of a clean. It's a bit, <laughs> a bit dirty. And of course I do with a slightly faster motor in it as well, but great fun to blast around. And I was really happy with the swap over. Classic iconic body, so you can't really have more than that. And it fits beautifully onto the M08 chassis. Next, we have the Porsche 911 RSR from Tamiya. Now it's not in its box art silver. This is in a white. Now the reason it's white and not silver is Rebecca and I did a dual build about a year ago where she built one and I built one as well. We did one in silver and I wanted to do it in white to make it a little bit old fashioned looking and I really like it. Now it's not in its stock form. I've done some upgrades to it. It's got metal window wipers. It's got the full light kit front and rear. It's also got a driver's cockpit inside. Now if I can take it off, it's a little bit faffy to take off, but if I can do that, there we go. So it has a full cockpit inside with lights as well. Now this kit didn't come with lights. I actually bought them from a different kit and made them fit. The TTO2B, nothing special, <laughs> yeah. Um, I bought a few bling bits for it, so it's been upgraded a little bit, but it hasn't been driven that much. I did drive this car on the show and I put a few miles on it, but I actually did a chassis swap so that uh, this one hasn't been driven at all. Um, I still want to change the wheels. I'm not too happy with these wheels. I want to get nicer ones, so I will do something with those. Uh, also, these are not the kit wheels either. I've uh, still got the kit wheels for it, but I just put these on for now. But I know there's nicer versions of these because I've got some on another Porsche, which I'll show you soon. So that is the TTO2 Porsche 911 RSR. And this one needs no real introduction, but if you don't know what this is, this is the Tamiko 10th Anniversary Porsche 934 RSR. Now this was limited to only 333 units. So as you can imagine, there's not many of them. And to be fair, every time I've seen someone post one, usually it's still in the box, which is a real shame as this is an absolute beauty. Now, one thing you will probably notice is the body doesn't really sit and it's not bolted down. The reason for that is the actual wheelbase of the chassis, which is a TA02, SW, so I've got my cheat sheet over there because I forgot, doesn't actually fit this body that well. It's off by a few mil. So there is a modification you could do where you actually adjust the rear arms to line everything up. And I need to do that before I can mount the body. But being that I never drive it and I kind of like this low down look when I just sit the body on the top, it's mainly just for looks really. Um, obviously too rare to drive but I love my Porsches and Rebecca is a big fan of the old Porsches as well. And one day I would love to, for us to be able to get one. So uh, come on YouTube, I need to get more views. <laughs> so that is the Tamiko Porsche 934 RSR. Now we move on to a car that I built on the show not that long ago, the XV01 Delta Integrale. Fantastic chassis, love it. Now I had this kit for nearly two years before I built it but it finally made it to the top of the list 
and uh, this was a real challenge from a decal point of view this car is these um lines oh, Yes, bit of a challenge. I used the water technique on this one and they came out really well, so I can highly recommend it. If you're thinking about building one of these, go check out my bodybuilding video on this one, as there's a few tips in it to help you get these decals down properly, because it's very easy to mess them up. They're a lot harder than they look, but I love it. It's a beautiful chassis. I love the way everything's uh, part-mentalized and, and put away to keep the dust away from it. Uh, the only problem is when you spend this much time on a body like this, the idea of driving it around and bashing it up. Now I've done some driving videos of this and I've actually hit the front once already and it doesn't really last very well because the bumper is behind the front of the polycarbonate body. The polycarbonate body takes the hit first. Um, you have to actually cut the bumper to fit and I've made it as tight as possible so there's no flex but still all that energy has to go somewhere but uh, it's nice to poodle it around in the back garden in the summer now and again. So we have another car here that needs no introduction whatsoever, the Porsche 959, probably the most famous Tamiya car ever made. Comment below if you agree or disagree, but uh, it's a true icon. And unfortunately, prices have gone bonkersly insane for parts, stickers, any aspect of this car. Luckily, I got this one just before the prices zoomed up. So what I got for my money was actually pretty good and I got a lot, a lot of extra pieces. So when I rebuilt this, I could actually replace all the damaged parts without any issues whatsoever, without having to spend an absolute fortune. Oh, something's lifted there. Now, what can I tell you about this car? Well, I did a full restoration on this one, full rebuild. There is a video on it. It's a very early one, so sorry about the quality but uh, it came out beautiful. Now the body is aftermarket, it's not an original. I do have an original body, but it's got a tiny little bit of damage at the back and it's so fragile um, that I'm not sure how I could have that fixed. I'd need someone who's a bit more of a professional to be able to fix it, to paint it up. But I've already plowed enough money into this car as it is that I don't want to spend any more money and I'm quite happy with it. Maybe at some point I'll get another body painted up where all the lines are painted by a professional and then I'll just fit the decals on it. I painted this one up and it's 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 about an 8 out of 10 I'd say but really you could push this up to a 10. The cockpits were professionally painted for me and they are 10 out of 10 amazing. Um, from that point of view if you'll notice the wheels these are not the correct kit wheels the kills uh, the kit wheels are yellow now the original car that this was based on had this this design of wheel and this color but Tamiya changed the color and I can understand why I guess it because the car looks a bit muted with the white wheels whereas the yellow really added a bit of contrast but I wanted these and luckily these popped up these are proper aluminium powder coated wheels don't ask me what they cost uh, as well so that really sort of made it look more it makes it look more like the original um, so I was happy with that and we changed the tires as well so they're not stock either but there you go that's my Porsche 959 and hopefully Tamiya come on put out the new one but whatever you do Tamiya do not put this body on a different chassis we want this body on this chassis but we can live without the decals because we can sort that out ourselves we just want the exact same car as it is but maybe in white and then we can do it ourselves. Now we have the Lancia Rally. Now this is a classic vintage Tamiya and I was lucky enough to pick this up before prices went stupid. It's in perfect condition pretty much. Uh, as far as I know the history of it, that it was built, the body was never painted. The decals were actually fitted onto the body, which is a great thing because it means that I can paint this up to a very high standard. Well reasonably high standard and I have extra decals so I can fit them back on again and it will look like a shelf queen. It did one or two runs I think and then something hit the front and broke one of the uh, plastic bumper mounts underneath and then it got put away and that was all it ever did by the look of it. Uh, it's had a replacement one fitted so it's now back to pretty much as you see it now. I haven't done anything to it myself the wheels and tires are brilliant and if I take the body off, oh, I'll take the bumper out, the bumper is perfect, there's no marks on the bumper whatsoever, no scuff marks and the body 
has no damage whatsoever around the weak spots it has lighting and uh, the driver is correct and everything inside is exactly as it should be all the vintage electronics are in it and if you look underneath you can see it's done almost no miles whatsoever i can't see any real damage there at all it's very uh, very low miles so i'm super happy to have it on the uh, in the collection and it won't be going anywhere but at some point in the future i will need to paint the body up and then it will go back on the shelf again this is a vintage audi quattro rally now unfortunately this one didn't have quite as easy life uh, this is exactly how i got it again another project i haven't started yet i've been collecting bits and pieces inside so i'll show you those in a bit but this body is actually okay the problem is it was painted on the inside and then painted on the outside with car paint. So that's what's ruined it from that point of view. But I'll probably get a replacement and just take all the bumpers off. Luckily, this car is complete. I have everything. I have the lights, the bumpers, the rear spoiler, the bottom bumper and all the um, bolts to go with it. So let's have a look now. The chassis inside, if I remember rightly, hmm, how do I get this up? Oh, it's that way. The chassis inside. So I've got some stickers and I've got some replacement bits and pieces. Now the car itself is actually in pretty good condition. You probably recognize this as this is the same chassis as the original Wild Willy. Um, but it's fully functioning. It uh, is so basic, but it works. Has it got, oh, it actually has a diff in this one. Um, so the, the chassis just needs a good clean. It's got all these sort of correct electronics in it and things like that. So uh, the tyres and wheels are looking a bit sorry for itself, but it's it's not miles gone. You know, it can easily be restored back to a loving condition. And then getting, I've got some decals already, and then just replacing the body. Whether it's worth actually attempting to try and save this body, possibly. I think actually looking at it, it's actually been painted on the outside twice. I don't know if it's been painted on the inside. Yeah, yeah, it has a bit. It looks like it was painted on the outside and then touched up on the inside where it started to flake off, which is a bit of a shame, but it would be worth trying to save the body as the body has no damage whatsoever. It's just really badly painted. So I don't know. It's very difficult time sometimes to save these kind of bodies. But there we go, might be worth a try. So there you go, that's the uh, Audi Rally. So I think that was all my Tamiya Rally cars. So we'll now move on to the buggies, which is probably the biggest part of the Tamiya collection. So we'll kick off with one that was on the show only a few weeks ago, and that's this, the Aero Ivanti. Now it's a very controversial buggy because it has the Ivanti name, but basically it's a chassis that shares itself with a few other cars it's a df02 chassis chassis is not too bad very simple very easy to build the controversy is obviously the name with a chassis that belongs to other cars and it doesn't really carry the kind of kudos that you would have had with the avanti as well as the engineering level drives okay reasonably quick must admit even though this is running a silver can but i am not a fan of this body whatsoever but there you go, it goes to the collection to basically complete my Vanti collection. So uh, yeah, and super difficult to find and pretty rare. So I'm surprised they haven't gone up in value being that they're just hard to get hold of. So if anybody's collecting the Avanti collection, which I guess is less people these days due to the prices of the, the uh, cars have now gone up. So to collect the whole uh, one tenth Avanti family is now looking more and more expensive. So there's probably not as many people, but uh, one of the rarest of the Avantis to get purely because people just didn't like it, I guess. Next, we move on to a very special car to me and one that a lot of people will probably not even know about, and that is the the Dyna Blaster. So what's so special about the Dyna Blaster? Yes, it's very pretty and very colorful, 
but so what? Well, this is the long lost brother from the Dinostorm. Now, I'm sure you all know what a Dinostorm is. It's the very famous racing buggy by Tamiya. Well, this actually shares the same underpinnings and chassis as that, making this probably the most track focused uh, stadium truck that Tamiya ever made. And a lot of people don't even know about it. Why? Well, I think what happened was when this came out, you also had the stadium blitzer, which looked kind of the same but was a lot lot cheaper this was an expensive kit so people looked at that and then they looked at this and were like well that's so much more expensive i'll just get that and that's why that was so popular but what you didn't realize is that looked the part but what was underneath was nowhere near as track focused as this and this is a amazing example that i've restored i did a whole new body for it I was lucky enough to get correct vintage decals. I spent a bit more time getting all the back. I did all the bars as best I can. And the decals are all original. But when you take off the body, you start to realize what's going on underneath. So if you ever get the chance to get one of these, I highly recommend it because what you're basically getting underneath is a Dynastorm chassis. Now this one has had some love spent on it. I've rebuilt it completely. I put a brand new chassis on the bottom and it's had brand new arms. So it is in mint condition. Now they haven't reread this, so all these parts are vintage. One thing I've fitted as well is it's got an Actor Power pink motor in it, the one without a sticker on it. So that's kind of hops back to the Dynastorm a little bit as well. But if you notice, I've also upgraded two high caps it's got vintage high caps on it as well so it's as nice as i can get it really in lovely condition i don't run it even though it's fully fully functioning and it fully works i haven't actually run it i've even got the correct wheels there's two different versions of these rims that you can get and these are the correct ones i bought the wrong ones there's like a satin and then there's the chrome version and these are the correct ones. So I'm really chuffed to have this and in such beautiful condition as well. Hopefully we'll get a re, -re so other people can actually get them and appreciate them. And I'd like to get one to actually drive it. So hopefully Tamiya may re-release it, but being that it's so not well known about, eh, we'll, We'll have to wait and see, but hopefully. Next is Tamiya Royalty, the 1988 Ivanti, and I am super lucky to have a really good original example in the collection. This is in beautiful condition, original body, super soft and highly flexible. Um, has a Technigold motor in it as well, and is basically unmolested, has a vintage uh, electronic speed controller in it, and it all exactly as it was. The only thing that lets it down is if you look at the suspension, they've kind of lost their color a little bit. So maybe they need to be replaced with some vintage uh, ones that haven't suffered with color loss. I'm guessing it sat on the on top of someone's wardrobe for a long time and it lost its color. But apart from that, it's in great condition. It's the original wheels, not original tires. Well, I don't think so because they're in perfect condition and they don't look cracked. So I assume they've been replaced, but the rims are correct because they're a slightly dark uh, yellow. Whereas if you look at the 2011 one, they're much more vibrant. So they're definitely the correct rims and every bolt is exactly where it should be. It doesn't look like it's been taken to put it apart or put back together again or messed with in any way whatsoever. However, um, the only thing I think I had to do to it when I got it was change a uh, part of the steering because it had been upgraded to a later version and I wanted it back to its original. So I swapped it out for an original one that one of you guys uh, on the channel had and uh, gifted to me so I could put it back to its original state. This is a Mark 1 1988 Avanti. There was a Mark 1 and a Mark 2. The only difference was they addressed a few of the weaknesses in the car because when it came out, it was it was very fragile and used to break lots of uprights. So this car has the original very, very fragile uh, uprights. And then there was a slightly different version and then there's been many. And if you look at the 2011 uprights now compared to these, they're like four times thicker. Next is probably the most successful kit Tamiya ever made by unit sales. That is the Grasshopper. Now this is not an original, this is a re-release version. Uh, this one's been modified. If you uh, take a look at the front, it looks kind of stock, 
but when I do this you'll notice that the front stays true that's because it's got Ampro Engineering's front end on it so that it doesn't uh, the uh, tracking stays exactly as it should when the suspension goes up and down also I've put a rear oil shocks on this one and it's got an anti-roll bar on the back doesn't really work it's not heavy enough it looks cool but it doesn't basically just makes the car very rigid at the back so I don't recommend doing these upgrades the front I do I recommend the Ampro Engineering front upgrade to improve the uh, geometry of the front suspension but it is expensive but it doesn't really mess with the look a lot of people try to change the front to put oil shocks on it whereas I think this is kind of a subtle you'd barely notice that it wasn't standard uh, which I like that so uh, it's a full runner I put a 540 silver can in it which most people do these days to give it a little bit more zoom but uh, yes everybody needs to have a grasshopper and they are so dirt cheap fun to build you can build them in just a few hours and this has actually been painted white but you don't even need to paint it white you could just put the stickers straight onto the plastic if you want to and I highly recommend getting one if you've never had one and this was the first Tamiya car I ever got I just realized I've actually changed the spotlights as well they're, they're not the ones that come with the kit um, so there you go that is my grasshopper I've actually got two of these I've got this one and I've got the candy green one as well but that's still in its box and that's just just in the collection because I don't know why <laughs> this has to be one of the best looking Tamiya cars I have in my collection I built this on the show from a brand new kit I was super lucky it's a bit dusty I need to dust it afterwards it's a Senna McLaren MP4-6 a very famous Formula One car being a Formula One fan as well I absolutely adore it this is a brand new never run uh, also I fitted what motor did I put in this I think it's the Acto Power Formula One it's not brand new it has got a few little marks but uh, kind of in keeping with the chassis so yeah absolutely stunning love it beautiful to look at and the paint job is not easy to do to get it right because there's nowhere to hide with your lines there's no stickers that go over the lines but if you get it right I also put the mulber livery on it obviously it doesn't come with that so I got those as well to upgrade it to how it should look like when it was actually driven because obviously toys and smoking liveries were around this time was being banned so of course Tamiya changed it so uh, you lost those decals but I've added them back again and uh, it sits in pride of place uh, in my collection next is the Ivanti Black probably the best Ivanti that they finally made in the family it had the upgrades with the, the sport steering and it had better diffs and things like that this one is in lovely condition the only problem is that the rear diff is full of gravel and sand so it sounds pretty pretty gritty but uh, I just need to take it out and remove the bearings replace the bearings and it will be good to go I also need to replace the bottom tray oh, the bottom is uh, missing off this I have a replacement because I took it off this and I put it on the Vadra because the Vadra doesn't have anything underneath it so you can imagine driving this with with no uh, protection underneath you'll destroy the chassis in no time at all so when I built that on the show I took the the bottom section off of this one because it had lots of scuff marks and put it on that because I wanted to return this back to mint so I have a replacement which is just a case of blowing it in and fitting it so again another project that needs to be done also the believe it or not the driver that was in this car it melted it, this car was sitting in the sun and because it was inside the canopy the driver melted his head melted so I need to replace it and I'm pretty sure I've got one in the collection to replace it as well so that is probably one of the more expensive Ivantis. For some reason, the black seems to demand quite a lot of money. Um, it has the correct Ivanti motor in it as well. Um, so quite an easy one to put back to mint condition again, which I will do at some point. And another one that needs no introduction whatsoever. It's this, the Sand Scorcher. Well, the Riri Sand Scorcher. Anyway, this is Rebecca's one. She built it on the show. I did the painting of the body. Haven't quite finished it. It still needs to have... The only thing left to do is the number plates and the two rear lights to do. 
uh, and fit those. There's a few upgrades we still want to do to it. We've got the fiber light chassis to fit on it, which is a carbon chassis, so that's got to go on it. Um, I've managed to trace down a humpback Tamiya battery that's in lovely condition to go inside it, so that finishes it off from the vintage look. We want to change the front bumper for the metal surround and the engine uh, protection bars we want to change from plastic to the metal ones. As you can see, we've also fitted a engine in the back of this one um, to make it look a bit more realistic, which came out really well, so super chuffed about that. Um, the only other thing, I think that's pretty much it. It's got upgraded metal rims and it just looks stunning, but the bodywork is difficult to get this real sharp line, it takes a bit of work. It's not as easy as you may think to paint up, but if you spend some time and get it right, thing looks amazing. And this will stay in the collection. Also, I'd like to get the better shocks. I've seen that you can get uh, branded uh, oil shocks to replace these ones that are just better quality. So maybe I'll do that as well, but they're not cheap. So now we move on to a car that is very topical as uh, I speak to you, and that is the Top Force Evolution. Why? Well, the Top Force Evo is due any day now. Well, definitely before the end of this month, and I can't wait, and I've got a few, a few on order, as I really wanted to get one on the show, and I adore this car. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I bought this about two years ago, and prices have been stalled. Very strange to see all the prices on cars going up, but this one seems to have been set at the price it was and it's just carried on. Now, a new inbox one of these, yeah, forget it, they're as rare as anything, and you're looking at well over a thousand pounds, but a decent one like this that's been kind of restored, um, they're like 500 pound, give or take, and that's pretty much what I paid for this, and that's kind of what they are now, so I'm surprised to say that they haven't actually gone up that much. I've done a few things to this one to improve it, like it's got all the new tires, um, and the, the correct round spikes, the wheels are correct, they are not dyed, um, the suspension is correct, all the chassis is right, it's got all the titanium bolts in it. The only thing that is letting this car down is this is not uh, the correct body, this is an aftermarket body. You can tell because it's missing the slat in here. Uh, and the decals are not original. But my plan is this. I actually have a fake Top Force Evo, which we'll come to later. This body will go onto that. And then I will. I have another body for this, a very special body that's got the scoop removed. Then I plan to fit cor uh, correct Top Force Evo body stickers on this, and then I'll just change this one sticker. As far as I know, every other sticker is correct. So I I'd rather have the Evo Tamiya decals with just one modification from MCI Racing than to just have full MCI Racing decals. So that's my plan for this one. Anyway, uh, uh, everything else inside is in lovely condition. The arms are all beautiful and the, the bottom is all looked after. Obviously it's got a tray so it didn't actually damage the chassis. You can tell it's aged because the uprights are not carbon fiber like the Evo are. Um, and it's beautiful and I'm really chuffed to have it. It's got the correct turnbuckles. There's a lot of fake ones of these around and uh, it's just nice to have an actual genuine car. The only thing that's different is the uh, uprights are metal versions in red. That's not what the car should have, but it's easy to change that back. The reason it's got them is they do break quite easily. So this was upgraded to metal. So there you go. That is my original Top Force Evolution. And I can't wait for the Evo, yay! Next we move on to the Super Astute. This is a brand new one, never run. I haven't got any motor in it. Uh, it's got everything else in it, but it doesn't have a motor. I've done a few mild modifications to this one. As you can see, it's got modern high caps on it and the wheels are not original. They are uh, aftermarket ones, so... Uh, but it helps with the color scheme, I think, just to sort of tie it in a little bit more. I guess personal choice, some people might like it, some people hate it, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Apart from that, it's pretty stock. I don't think I've changed anything else. It's just gone straight into the collection 
and it's basically a shelf queen. I don't think I've even driven it around the Bugrad track yet, but I need to throw a motor in it and give it a go. So that is my Super Stew, and I can highly recommend it. A very capable buggy, that's for sure. Now this is a very special car in my collection, and I am super proud of it. This is a mint condition Astute that's been upgraded with some pretty rare parts. So all the body and the wing and the decals, all original. It's got vintage high caps front and rear. It's got metal uprights that you can't tell are metal. And uh, also the back links are carbon fiber and metal, but very subtle so you can actually drive this. It's got brand new arms all round, brand new bumper. It's in mint condition new tires also it's got a uh, vintage tamiya mint battery in it all the original mechanical speed controller also i've managed to source a T T T tcc rare gearbox for it so that is a big upgrade which is kind of what you see in the super astute and it's also got a mint um, uh, RX 540 Technigold motor in it and it is absolutely gorgeous. I don't think there's another upgrade that I could do to it to make it any more special. I tell a lie, there is a wing upgrade that I have got where I can change it to a different wing that's also very rare. The tires on the front are in great condition which is almost impossible to find these days. So uh, I am super proud of this one. I've had two of these and I sold the other one and kept this one but it is a gem and I dread to think how much money I have put into this car. <laughs> now we have a car that I really like but it's not a high valuable car or anything like that but it is pretty rare. You can hunt them down but they're not you can't just go on eBay and pick them up straight away you've got to hunt for them and that is the Neo Top Force. Now you might think it looks exactly like a Top Force or Top Force Evo but it is radically different. The chassis is completely different it was an oddball one Tamiya did as a ready to run there's about three you three cars that you could have got ready to run that had this weird chassis then there was a Hummer there was this one and then there was a super mantra array again uses this really weird chassis that's very different um, no reason why and we never saw that chassis again um, so I'm not quite sure what Tamiya were doing with that that kind of thing and obviously they were only ready to run so they were never kit formed whatsoever. Weird oddball that this chassis and this body don't really go together very well. That's why the body is actually sitting up higher than the spoiler. You think when you look at it that the spoiler has been lowered but it hasn't. It's the actual body that's raised up because of the way that the chassis sits and what all the electronics inside makes the body must sit up this high. So it looks normal until you take the body off and then you realize that the wing is not lowered at all. It's in exactly the same space as you would get for most buggies. So I like it, it's a really oddball one. Prices have been going up a little bit, but you still can hunt them around for about 140, 150 pound for a reasonably good one, um, up to say 200 for a Minter. Uh, obviously it should come with the transmitter as well that matches this. And the one big thing to keep an eye out for is that it has the battery clip because it's unique to these cars. So getting a replacement, good luck with that. Also, you want to get one that's got as little damage to the bottom as possible because you will not get a replacement for love nor money. So that's the Neo Top Force. So next we have the Fighter Buggy RX 25th Anniversary Edition that came out last month, I think it was, or six weeks ago. I love what they did with the box design. It was really nice. They stepped it up and did a real polish on the box. It's an entry level kit, but it did make it feel a bit special. Um, I have two of them. I'll explain the story in a bit, but uh, it wasn't planned that way. So I built this on the show not that long ago. I must admit, never a fan of the original at all. I thought it was, it's, it's proportionally a bit awkward, but what they've done with it now with the black and the decal stickers being in sort of this metal color and the black, I really like it. I think they, they polished a turd is what we call it. Uh, <laughs> From that point of view, and I like the oil shocks. That was a nice touch versus the vintage ones being pogo-y uh, spring sh friction shocks. But unfortunately, the geometry of this car is terrible. 
Yeah, that's not great, Tamiya. We I mean, could do with a bit of an improvement. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> but it is super entry level, and you can build this kit in no time at all. You can throw it together in in like half an hour, and even the body. I've actually painted this body, but you can uh, just stick the stickers on straight away, and away you go. Um, one thing I did see that was really good online was is Andy Robinson. He put a gearbox that was clear in it. And I think he did a really good job of that because it was clear and then the, the gears inside are coloured from another kit. And I think Tamiya missed a bit of a trick there because I really like that mod. It looked factory, but just a little bit more of attention to detail. And being that the gearbox kind of hangs out the back of the car, it adds another uh, element to it, but those parts are quite rare. So uh, it's a difficult one to do that mod, but I really liked what he did with his one. Um, go check him out. He's, uh, he's doing a lot of hard work trying to grow an RC channel. So I take my hat off to him as well. Um, so uh, do a bit of Google for him and you'll find his stuff and he's got some really cool stuff. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much the Fighter Buggy RX. Whether I'll keep the other one or not, I honestly don't know. The reason that I ended up with two is because I never, I never planned this. It just sort of happens. Well, when I built this one, it was missing a part. It was missing this bit here. So I went online. Now, I don't know whether I lost it or whether it was never in the kit. It was a loose part. It was never on a tree. So when I went online to try and get this bag that this was in, I could only get it outside the UK. Now with import tax and, and handling fees and all this kind of stuff, it was actually working out to be quite expensive. I think it was like nearly 38 pound for this part that I needed. And you could get the kit reasonably cheap. And I saw one that someone had bought and was actually wanted to sell. So it was under the uh, normal market price. And I think I got it for like, 90 pound so it was a case of if i can spend sort of 35 40 pound on one part that i need for this or get a whole new car which is what i did but then the minute i did that a viewer got in contact and said hey i saw your video on your um uh, rx i have that part i'll happily send it to you for free which was a lovely thing to do you know who you are Thank you for that. So I'd already purchased it. So uh, that turned up and the part turned up. So I was able to finish it. So that's why I've got two. Now, the only reason I kind of haven't just turned it around and sold the other kit on again is I kind of like the box, the box design that they did, the 25th, 25th anniversary. They did a really good job of it. So I'm guessing uh, I'll just leave it in the collection. I'm not normally a box collecting kind of guy. Um, but I kind of like that one and it's so cheap and then if I was to sell it online the fees and stuff like that It's it's not really worth it. Whereas uh, I think maybe having one bill and one in the box being that it's the 25th anniversary Another gorgeous restored car that I have in the collection and this was restored by Rebecca is the madcap This is in lovely condition. It is an original body and original decals that I managed to get hold of as a set so it's it's correct it's not aftermarket even has a brand new Tamiya sports battery in it uh, has all the vintage electronics everything else is in lovely condition the only thing I've done to it differently is I've put vintage high caps on it and it's got pretty about 90% front tires uh, quality and uh, the chassis is in pretty decent condition. It's not mint, but it's very l uh, light running. New bumper, new arms. So the arms are all new. So pretty much as restored as you're gonna get with it. And uh, I absolutely adore it. The only thing I'd like to do is to put a TTC gearbox on it. Would be nice, but unfortunately I can't find another one and maybe a more special motor for it. But uh, it's another one. And when I got it, I didn't think I was gonna like it, but after I've uh, seen it in real life and now it's finished, it's actually a much better looking car than it looks in photographs. So uh, I can highly recommend it. Whether we'll ever see a Riri on this one, I hope so, I really do. Uh, I think it's a beautiful buggy and I'd love to see a Riri of this. Next, we have the Nova Fox, obviously the re-release of the Fox from back in the day. A car that I, uh, my father actually had when I was younger. He had one of these um, that he played with now and again. He bought it second hand. It was in a mustard color, very basic that he drove. I talked to him about it. He can't remember it. 
But uh, so I've got this one. Uh, this is the second Nova Fox I've had. I actually got one that was pre-built. Then I sold it on when I was able to get a new inbox one to build on the show. And then I've built this one on the show. I did it in my favorite uh, metallic blue Tamiya paint. So I've lifted, it's a bit more lifted than the standard uh, box blue that they do it in. I really like it. It's a fun car to drive. It's it is showing its age, but it's a unique chassis and was never used on anything else. So uh, these cars are getting a little bit difficult to get. The Nova Fox is one of those things that you, you get them in and then they vanish and then you don't see them for like a year and no one can get them. And then they come back in again and they're replenished for a little bit and then they disappear instantly. So if you're looking for one of these, they can be actually be really difficult to get hold of and you can't figure out why they're not that old. Um, but keep hunting around now at some point i'd like to get in a original fox but being that there's not that much difference apart from really the decals and a few other bits and pieces very small changes this is very true to the original maybe the drive shafts are not quite right uh on the back and i think the anti-roll bar is slightly different uh, but apart from that there's not much in it so having a nova fox is not that much different to having a vintage Fox, apart from you just getting an original versus the um, re-release. Decals, there was a few changes, but not a great deal. So they kept it kind of quite honest. And I'm a big fan of the Nova Fox. I really like it. So there you go. That is my Nova Fox. And I have run this a few times in the garden, but it's in pretty much immaculate condition. Next, we have a car, again, that needs no introduction whatsoever. The Falcon from Tamiya. Now I've had quite a few of these on the channel so go back and check out all those videos. There's about eight videos on this car and I've had many of them. I've had my fingers burnt on these. I've bought some, I bought more and then I bought more and then I sold them off and I've basically kept the best two for myself that I've managed to restore. Now luckily this one is a brand new never driven original body uh, original decals it's painted it's not sprayed um, from back in the day it was done really well um, it has not a mark on it it is uh, lovely brand new bumper arms the works and it's got all the vintage electronics in it it's just like it fell out of a time capsule and I absolutely love it. It's fully ball raced. I've even put a, what have I got in it? An RX 540 SD Techni Power motor in the back of it, just to give it a bit of bling. Now, I, my second one of these I have is a, again, a mint version of it, but it's being modified. It has all the Ampro engineering top and lower uh, chassis braces, the arms, the uprights and everything like that. Um, so that one is, it was originally going to be my driver one, but it ended up being so uh, mint when I finished with it. I don't drive that uh, either, but it's got all the bells and whistles on that one. It's even got a brand new bumper, brand new chassis and everything as well. Um, so yeah, now I end up with two that I don't drive, even though one is well capable of being driven. Now, hopefully we're going to see this later in the year from Tamiya. I do hope what I was told is true because so many of you love this car like I do. This was my second Tamiya ever after the Grasshopper. I got this one. Unfortunately, it does suffer from a bit of uh, being fragile, especially as they're getting old now as well. And getting parts for these is not easy at all. Even a set of wheels and tires, uh, sorry, rims, yellow rims are hard to find. Tires not so bad. You can get white wheels, but getting the yellow ones is really tough. Um, so there you go. That's my Falcon. It doesn't need any more introduction than that, really. Now, this is a car that I always wanted back in the day, but it was just too expensive for me. I could never get into a four wheel drive Tamiya. So that's why I had a Falcon. And that is the Boomerang. Now, this is a fantastic retro buggy. And this is what Tamiya did best. The, this era of these kind of buggies with their characters 
Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. And I wish we could see new versions of these kind of character cars and buggies coming out that weren't just hardcore racing. They were about enjoyment and fun and having a personality and being different. Whereas now a lot of people obviously are just trying to do track buggies. And of course, once you do just hardcore track stuff, you kind of lose a bit of the soul. Whereas these were just so desirable back in the day and I love it. Now I restored this on the channel and it's probably the first, if I remember rightly, restoration I ever did on the channel. Don't go and watch it, it's awful <laughs> and it's terrible, but it's uh, there's a lot of detail in it and I basically rebuilt everything. I replaced nearly everything. Also it taught me about the balance of restoration because I think I went too far with this one and I replaced so much of it that it's borderline a different car. The only parts I really kept is the actual chassis. Everything else has been replaced. The arms, the suspension, the bumper, the body, um, the uprights, the tires, the wheels, and uh, all the blue, the, the blue parts I managed to get vintage. So uh, I fitted those, but you've got to draw a line. I think even the gearbox housings I replaced um, so this was around the time when the boomerang was easy to get hold of. So I restored, uh, I restored this. Now, if you're in the same position now and you're trying to restore a boomerang, you'll probably find it a lot harder than I did when I did this one as parts were actually quite easy. And I think that was part of the problem was it was very easy for me to just buy the part off, off eBay and fit it. And it was all lovely and new and fresh. Um, but Hey, each to their own, you know, if you, you can restore it as much as you like. But I got to the point where I just thought I'm replacing too much. So the only thing that's original is this chassis piece here. This is being replaced. That's been replaced. These um, quite a lot. I've put a different motor in it. Now the suspension is not stock. As you can see, it is a black suspension. I do have the correct uh, CVA yellows, but I kind of like the black. It just the yellow. I don't know. I'm kind of getting used to having a bit of yellow now and it kind of makes it pop a bit. But at the time, I like the idea of just having it blue, white and black um, from that point of view. So maybe I'll put it put it back on. But I, I spent quite a long time restoring everything and it's in beautiful condition. Um, one thing that people don't really know about these is you can pretty much run a brushless through these and you can run 2S lipos and these will take it. I have seen people blasting these up and down the street. Um, so from that point of view, they're very rugged. Um, so there you go. It's the very famous boomerang. Another Tamiya icon for you, the frog. And oh, it's just brings back memories. This I remember from back in the day and it was a very popular buggy and everyone should have one of these in their collection. Now I've modified mine a little bit by putting the pink wheels on it. These are from a June Watanabe, which are a nightmare to find and the tires are probably worth about the same as the car. But uh, I just like this sort of extra pink bit at the bottom. Now you would think being a racing frog, it would have been in green along the bottom. And I looked into it a little bit and trying to figure out, well, why is it pink? And the only thing I found is in Japan, there's these little tiny cars that uh, were called frogs, they were like delivery vans, but they had this sort of white and pink livery. So whether that's actually got any correlation to between why Tamiya did it, that they saw those and said, oh, well, we call it a frog and we like the pink. That's why some people do the in green. I like the pink. I think it just works. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. Um, and that's why I went with the pink tires. A very famous off-road chassis actually drives very well. Really nice to drive and I really enjoy it. Obviously, I don't drive it with these wheels on. I swap them out for the standard ones. Um, the paint job is a little bit tricky because you have to mask off and paint this pink yourself. So getting it to go around the front can be a little bit tricky. Uh, also, the back is in black here as well. So a lot of people leave that out because that is a little bit difficult to do. Um, but I absolutely adore it. I love it. And it's definitely going to stay in the, in the collection forever.
Now this is a car I love to drive and that's kind of why it's in the condition it's in. This is a vintage hotshot, a very, very popular car and probably one of the best looking cars that Tamir ever made. Um, this one is a unrestored original, pretty much exactly like it was. It's in reasonably good condition considering, but I drive it. Now, I have all original parts to restore this back to a shelf queen if I wanted to, and they're all vintage parts. I was gifted them from a viewer, but the problem is it nags me is I actually enjoy driving this car, and if I restore it, then I'll never drive it again. And I have a lot of other sort of hotshot cars in the family, like the Boomerang and the hotshot through um, Super Shot and stuff like that, that I don't drive because they're in lovely condition. So this one has stayed in driving condition. I just get it out, plug a battery in it and go and blast it. And I don't worry too much about it. But at some point I'll have to bite the bullet and restore it back to its lovely mint condition. This one has kind of this suspension has gone all weird and stuff i have all replacements but uh, i just haven't bothered to um do anything with it it broke down on me uh, the electronics packed up so i changed that that's on the show as well um and then i just got it up and running and off i go it's only got a sports tuned motor in it or is it sports tuned uh, torque tuned motor and that's good enough and it is so nimble and you throw it around obviously you don't do big jumps and stuff like that on it but it's great to just take out and drive so that is my slightly neglected but very much loved hot shot next we have another car that doesn't really need that much of an introduction it is the super shot now this is a vintage one in beautiful condition well looked after it's got all its vintage electronics in it now it's not in box art it's actually in a color of an advertisement that Tamiya put out where they actually did one of these in this color so this is to replicate that uh, image that was in the brochure from Tamiya and I really like it i love the gold it's super punchy um, i haven't actually done anything to this car i just bought it like this it's got the correct motor in it um, it's pretty straightforward and very honest and a well looked after example I spent a fortune on it but uh, it hasn't gone up any value since i purchased it it's worth the exact same price but uh, that's not my predominant reason for buying it and it was just a lovely uh, car that I had an opportunity to get at the time. And I was working, so I had a bit of money to spend and that's why I added it to the collection. And it will stay, it will not go either. Uh, the only one I don't have really is the Hotshot 2 and hopefully we'll get a re-re of the Hotshot 2 soon um because i'm missing that one from the collection next we're looking at a car that you'll rather love or hate but you will definitely know about it and that is this the big wig very distinctive buggy from back in the day this is a vintage this is not a re, -re. Um, it's in actually pretty decent condition. It could kind of do with a new body, which I have, and I have all vintage parts of the yellow uh, engine intake, the exhausts and things like that, and the roll bars, so I could fit them, as well as I've got a lot of other uh, original parts that I can restore it. I haven't got around to restoring it. It's one of those cars that's, it's not in terrible condition. It's in pretty good condition, but it's not shelf queen, but it's all vintage original it's got the electronics in it which are correct and period correct it's even got the 8.4 volt battery in it i need to restore that it's a little bit worn out but it's got the right battery it's got the correct motor in it and everything the only thing i've really done is put new rims and tires on it purely because the rims has gone a funny color from age and the tires had dried out so much they would spin on uh, the rims so i changed those over and then it's kind of sat as it is now. So at some point I will do a whole new body for it and that will bring it back up again. I don't think it needs a full strip down rebuild personally. I think it's in pretty decent condition. So I'd rather leave all the original screws as they are. But there you go, that is the big wig. Now one of Tamiya's strangest cars built on an Avanti chassis, go figure, right? The, the Vajra, the weirdest Ivanti car ever. And if you've seen an Ivanti Mark II or an Ivanti, uh, Aero Ivanti, they have less in common with the Ivanti than this does. It is absolutely bonkers kind of monster truck based on a long wheelbase Ivanti chassis. Now, a lot of people take these chassis and put them in a, an Ivanti car 
to get an even longer wheelbase for uh, faster straight runs and more stability like that uh, because the wheelbase is obviously longer. I have this in the collection purely to actually fill up my Vanti collection. I don't like it at all and it doesn't actually perform that well either. I did hear if you change the tyres you can get a bit better performance out of it. It's the most bonkers looking thing ever. When you take the body off the upright towers are massive but basically it's an Avanti top and bottom chassis. What a bizarre idea. I'd love to have been in the meeting when someone said hey let's turn an Avanti into a monster truck thing. But basically they ruined the handling, the ride, everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an oddball one and it's good to have something a bit strange in the uh, collection and if you look at the wh front wheel arches for this thing it is crazy it doesn't even have front wheel arches they just cut the whole lot out this body is on other vehicles as well and you have different wheel arches that you cut out and this is basically cutting the whole side out because of the uh, articulation is so big yeah, also I left off a lot of the lightning, lightning stickers because they're just too fussy and too... Bleh. I'm not even a big fan of these red ones either. Uh, it actually looks nicer with it just in its basic form without even the red stickers on. Um, so there we go. That is a weird oddball from Tamiya, but it's great to have it in the collection. Also getting very hard to get hold of. Now we move on to something a lot more modern, the TCO1 Formula E car. As you can see, this one is about as loved as <laughs> it's filthy dirty and it doesn't have a body. Well, if you haven't seen the videos for this, go check them out. They were very popular. Uh, I managed to get it on the show very quickly after this kit was, the chassis was released. I built it really quickly and then I crashed it on its first run. I managed to squeeze a 3652 Easy Run brushless motor in it. So this car will easy do 70 odd mile an hour upwards but i crashed it at 63 mile an hour and as you can imagine uh yeah it did a bit of damage unfortunately the uh, dog bone on the front left the cup on the outer side disintegrated uh, at about 63 mile an hour and the dog bone then fell out we lost drive in the front left wheel so what happened is the car then pitched rolled over this way and then hit the curb on this direction crushing the body that took me two days to do so uh, yes, luckily because the body took all the damage, the chassis came out reasonably light damage, uh, snapped off these, snapped off this, uh, obviously broke the cup, broke the, uh, the dog bone, uh, came out and was scratched. Um, and I think there's one or two other little pieces that needed replacing, but I got all the parts in and it's all fully working. It just doesn't have its body back on it. And I have a replacement body for it. Um, that I need to put on it and uh, I will at some point also have a, a, a touring car body that I might do for it I do enjoy driving it it's lovely to drive um, if you have got some hot power in these you definitely want to get rid of those dog bones for sure um, I wouldn't risk it especially on the front you can live with them on the back but I changed out all the dog bones and upgraded them so I won't have that failure now it might have been just a one-off failure that that part happened to be very there's something flawed in that part when it was made but why risk it when you can change them for very little money which is what I did I did the front and the back so I don't have dog bones on any of this car anymore but it needs a body but I do really love the onboard shocks I would like to see some Formula One bodies for it but I think the proportions are not quite right because I don't think the bodies will go I think the chassis is too fat here it should be much more narrower and Tamiya does have uh, Formula One cars anyway but with the onboard shocks it does look pretty cool and I've seen few people do with the body where they leave out a section so you can see the shocks working and you can get upgraded shocks as well as many other upgrades for this but I just like it as it is so I haven't bothered to upgrade it these wheels and tires are rubbish especially the back they're too thin um, so putting if you want to do proper driving in it you're going to change those out for sure anyway there you go that's a TC01 and it's been a bit neglected next we have my fake Evo and there's probably a lot of these around because a lot of people have done it I bought this one like this before I actually got a vintage Evo because uh, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to get one so I picked up this 
Now, it's close, but it obviously is not an Evo. It has titanium bolts throughout it. It has high caps, but the modern ones, not the old ones. It's carbon fiber low and upper deck, which is not quite right. And it's got the carbon uprights as well, but they're not the correct ones. Um, it has turnbuckles, but not the actual ones from the Evo. The tires are correct, but the rims are re-dyed. If you're gonna dye your rims for your fake Evo, one thing I've noticed is everyone goes way too dark on them. If you actually would get the chance to look at real Evo rims, they are very pale. They're not real deep. There's actually almost a white to them as well. So if you dye your rims, don't dye them as much as what you think you need to. Otherwise you get this real powerful, vibrant color and it's not actually like the um, Evos. Obviously, you know, if you're not that bothered, then dye them how you like them. But if you're trying to match them up, um, like these are way too powerful orange. They should be much paler than the um, originals. I put a new bumper on it. It's actually in pretty decent condition underneath. You know, it's running brushless. I do drive it around. As you can see, I kind of broke it. Yeah, nothing new there. I put it around the Bugrad track. Set a good time. There's a video on that if you want to go and check it out. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. Being that I'm going to have the Evo coming in and I've got a few Evos coming in and I've got an original Evo, having a fake one doesn't really make much sense, but I have quite a lot of money invested in this being that it has uh, original, uh, it has high caps and it has the correct tires, which are obviously quite valuable. So I honestly don't know. And it's obviously got all the titanium bolts. So I honestly don't know what to do with this one, whether I'll end up selling it. I don't know. I'll probably end up putting a proper Top Force Evo body on it from the new release that's coming out. Uh, I honestly don't know. Or maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll just keep it as a driver. I don't know, but they'll have to change the tires because these tires are too rare. Anyway, I'm waffling on there. I honestly don't know, but I need to come up with some reason why I need to keep this. Now we have another extremely rare car that kind of flies under the radar that no one really talks about and there isn't a massive buzz about, but good luck trying to find one. And that is the Super Manta Ray. So I hear you say, well, what's the problem? I'll get a Manta Ray and I'll spray it to uh, gunmetal gray and then I'll get some aftermarket decals and mine will look exactly like it. Well, you would be wrong because this has almost nothing to do with the Mantra Array. It has a completely different chassis. This was another one of those ready to runs that's the same as the Neo Top Force. So you cannot really fake it. It's completely different underneath. So if you want to add one of these to your collection, yeah, they are not easy to find. Um, I spent ages trying to find one and they just don't come up very often. They don't demand crazy money considering how rare they are um, because a lot of people just don't don't know about them or they just see the Super Manta Ray and think, well, they're everywhere. I'll get one of those. Why would I get one of these? Um, or they just think it's a slightly different color version. Obviously, it's got blue blue shocks, which is a bit different as well. But I wanted to get one purely because they're so rare. But they don't demand crazy money. Um, so if you're after one of these, it's a patience waiting game. At some point, I think people are going to realize how rare these are. And then they'll probably go stupid money like everything else. But I think until enough people realize how rare these are, I think you'll still be able to pick them up for a reasonable price if you are a shrewd uh, hunter and you can hunt one down. So I'm lucky enough to have one in the collection and I didn't think I was going to get this one, but uh, luckily I managed to do it and it's in lovely condition as well. Uh, if you're trying to get one of these, get the best you can because you cannot replace any of this. It's all very unique to this car. So there you go. And it has all the original electronics in it as well. And that's the Super Manta Ray. Next, we move on to a car that's probably one of the most famous Tamiya cars for all the wrong reasons. It's a, it's a car that is probably known as the ugliest Tamiya car ever made, the Striker. Now, I have to agree, back in the day, I looked at these and I was like, oh my God, that is awful. It's the love child of a two-wheel drive buggy and a Formula One car. They came together and had this monstrosity. Now, let's not be too hard on it. It did sell reasonably well, I think mainly because it was an entry level kit. So it was very cheap and easy to get into. So I think a lot of youngsters got them. Unfortunately, they're not exactly very robust. If you smash the front, the energy goes through and actually cracks the chassis in this section. 
Tamiya did do an update chassis, so there's two different versions of this chassis with reinforcements, uh, and as well as back here, there's reinforcements as well, so there is two different uh, chassis options available, but they're very, very uh, similar, just slight improvements in reliability to stop them cracking. Now, I've always been a bit of an advocate for this. I built two of these, and I actually gave one away on the show, and then I restored this one. And I must admit, it's it's grown on me massively. I absolutely love it. I sent off the center uh, section with the driver to have it professionally painted, and he did an amazing job, as I wanted to get one as perfect as possible. And being that the driver is a big part of this, having it professionally painted really lifted it. And I tell you what, this is a stunning looking car, and I'm really chuffed. But it's one of those ones that grows on you over time. If you're looking to collect one of these, I would I keep saying to people you need to make sure you get into it early because there's not many of them around and the ones that are around are a bit ropey and a right mess and you'll throw a lot of money at them to get them to a good standard. So prices on these I think will continue to go up. They have over the last year and a half, two years crept up higher and higher and I've seen some of these going for over 200 whereas right at the beginning when I first started getting one of these you could pick them up for 70, 80 pound. So uh, I think they're just going to keep going up purely because most of them are ropey and broken and to get a mint one has become super rare. So there you go, maybe I'm wrong, comment below, let me know, that's the striker. Now we have the 2011 Ivanti. This one I bought exactly as you see it. I have done nothing to this. Now the person who had it before, I think they were, they really wanted a black edition because they've obviously painted it up in silver and they've changed the wheels. I do have a full replacement body set for this one to turn it back to its standard. I just haven't got around to doing it. And it's actually in pretty decent condition apart from a few little cracks at the front here. Um, yeah, this is what kind of set me off getting the Ivanti family. Um, and when I first got this in, I was so chuffed because I always wanted an Ivanti from back in the day, but there was no way in hell I was ever going to get one. So when I found out that they did the 2011 and then I saw this, I jumped at it. It was still expensive even back then, but not what you pay now. I think I paid 200 and... £60 for it, and may be wrong, but I think I paid £260 for it. Now, pff, these are looking at £400 all day long these days, if not more. Um, so I will restore this one back to a standard 2011 at some point, but for now it lives in the collection as a slightly different looking uh, 2011. So there you go. Next, we have a car that's never been on the show yet, and that is this. Now, this is a Tolman Formula One car by Tamiya. Sorry, I need to look up some specs. This is kit 58018, and it's a Rolt RT2 Hart 420R. Now, this was gifted to me by uh, Timothy Pimlot. He went, sent me a whole um, load of information about the car, and he dug it up. It's actually in pretty decent condition. It just needs one part that's broken on here, um, which I need to find. But apart from that, it doesn't need that much. It's in a lovely condition. It feels ancient. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a metal bottom chassis. It's very uh, old school looking. It's got a little bit of damage at the front, but this could be fully restored which I hope to do at some point. I will do a video on this and I'll go through all the information that he's given me on me. There's a whole backstory to this car. So it was very kind of him to gift me this and I will restore it and it will go into the collection. Um, so there you go, just a sneak peek at a car that will be coming to the show at some point soon. Next, we have a car that I really like. That is the Thundershot. This is a vintage one and it is immaculate. It was put into a box and it was taken out 30 years later or whatever it is. It has the original body. This is the very soft original body, original decals, original electronics. Uh, it's got the extra wing that's from back in the day as well. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? The only thing that's different is the uh, gold wheels. I fitted on it, I think, yes, myself. Um, even the bumper is original and it's immaculate. The underside is beautiful. This is as good as it gets. It even has a brand new um, uh, uh, RX 540 Technigold motor in it. 
that has not got a single mark on it. So I was uh, very pleased to get this one and I managed to pick this up just before prices went stupid. So I think I paid less than 200 pound for it. I think I paid like 165 pound or something like that for it, 180 pound, I can't remember now. Um, so yes, very lucky. Hopefully we will see a reissue of this because this obviously has been re-released before, but a reissue would be nice as I would like, I think it's the best looking one in this family and I would really like to have one to run around. Obviously I'm not gonna drive this one around um, it has the front upgraded to a metal machined part. The weak part has been replaced. Um, I'm not quite sure why uh, I did that. Yeah, why did I do that when I'm never going to drive it? Anyway, there you go. I spent some money on it and changed it. I think the part was, was cracked anyway, and I just replaced it for the metal one. Um, they'll crack just sitting on the shelf. A lot of the parts on this will crack just from sitting on the shelf. So there you go. That's just a good look at my Thundershot, and I'm chuffed to have such a vintage mint one in the collection. Now we move on to its sister car, the Terra Scorcher. Now this is a 2020 release. I uh, built on the show, brand new new in box. So uh, completely the opposite end of the scale from what I just showed you, a completely mint uh, vintage one to a brand new Riri that was just released. Now, if you'd like to see the video of this, you can go check it out, it's in the archive. I did a full build and paint video on it. Um, I added the gold wheels on top of it, but apart from that, it's pretty much exactly as it should be. It's in a beautiful condition. I did throw in an old uh, sports tune motor just to have it a bit of a nod back to back in the day. Um, I've driven it a few times, but uh, only now and again. Really, it's one for the collection. Really like it, really nice. I spent some time painting the body up and it's got like nine layers of paint on it. This is in the correct dark blue. Um, that's uh, box art. I didn't actually go for the metallic blue still got a bit of dust on it so there you go not much to really say about this one but uh, it was great that Tammy re-released it now another car that I am super chuffed to have in the collection and it took me way longer than you would think to get hold of it and that is this the June Watanabe Hornet now these were really easy to get hold of at one point and now they demand insane money so much so I can't justify spending that kind of money on which is basically a Hornet in different colors but I really like it grew on me and I do love the color combination so I actually bought lots of parts and built my own if you look really carefully there's one or two little telltale signs that it's not exactly right the springs should be white not in silver I need to paint them as well as the rear ones as well everything else is pretty much there I've got all the parts for the steering it's uh, all the wheels, tires and everything. I managed to get a hold of another uh, Hornet, so I got all the gears and parts for it, and then I put it back together again. Now, it took me a long time to gather all the parts, because when I bought, I bought one group of parts, there was some bits missing that I had to then source from other places, and most of this car is not the same, apart from some of the hardware bits and pieces. So it's not as easy as you think. It's not just buy a chassis and a bumper and you're done. There's actually quite a lot. But I managed to get there, and uh, I'm super happy with it. I'm tempted to get a professional painter to paint me a body um, so that these dots are all painted in. Stupidly, I did something that I thought was gonna be clever, but it didn't really work, is I actually cut out every single circle. Now, when you get the decals, you're supposed to cut them out in groups. Now, so I didn't want to have the, the labels. I just wanted them all individual dots and it works brilliantly on any flat surface. Where it doesn't work is where they overlap as some of the uh, dots have started to lift where they would have been supported by extra parts of the decal. So that didn't really work out quite as well as I'd liked. It looks good when I stick them down but there's a few that lift all the time after a week or so also I cut the windows out which I'm not too sure about whether it's better just to leave the windows instead of having this mesh um, I don't know but I did it anyway so at some point I could probably change the body I have seen a few XB bodies come up that have kind of gone eh, maybe I'll get one of those but then they kind of charge they end up selling 
for more money than I could get a professional painter to do a better job than just having the stickers. So at some point I will do that. I was really chuffed that I finally got the tires as well because they're really difficult to get. So actually having two sets of June Watanabe tires is quite a rare thing to do because it's only on this car and um, with the black rims as well. So there you go, that's my June Watanabe and it's a quirky one you kind of love or hate and I'm just chuffed to finally have one in the collection. Now we move on to a very famous kit from Tamiya. This is the Nissan King Cab. And uh, this one I've been slowly restoring for woo, two years, two and a half years. And it hasn't really been on the show that much. It just pops up in, in videos just like this. And it usually has a little bit more done to it since the last time that you may have seen it if you're eagle-eyed or you're just following one particular car. Now, this has gone through lots of updates and changes, but it doesn't look that different because the body needs to be done. The chassis is totally finished now. I managed to find new rims and tires. Good luck finding tires like this. They are insanely rare and insanely expensive. So I've managed to get decent wheels and tires now. Also, it's got all its original electronics in it. When I got this, it didn't have any. I've also changed all the artwork. I've also changed arms and plates, so it's all restored back to a lovely condition. There's a few little scuffs, but almost nothing. New front bumper, new rear bumper, new uprights. Um, one thing I've done to this, which I'm really chuffed with, is I managed to get a TTC gearbox for it. And it's also got a very nice motor in it as well. So uh, I've really raised it from that point of view. The only thing I would like to do now is actually get hold of a set of high caps for it, vintage or new. The problem is they're massive. So trying to find a full set, I think you have to end up buying two sets of high caps to get the rears to actually put onto this truck. But at some point that is one of my goals is to actually get some decent high caps on it. Uh, apart from that, I've got original decals, but uh, it came with this body and this is by, lived on it, but it's a bit scratched up and, and banged up. Hopefully at some point I will be able to get a new body. I'd like to get an original body, but good luck with those. Um, so going aftermarket might be an option unless we see a re re of this. If we get a re-release of this, obviously I will then get a original body from Tamiya. Um, it's a... <laughs> It's a long drawn out process trying to restore one of these and I'm so close to having a real mint one. But I need to get on and get the body done. I may actually get the body painted up by a professional because I want the lines to be bang on sharp. So maybe I'll get a professional to do it before I use my vintage decals. So there you go. That's one that kind of sits in the background quietly, but it's actually one of my favorite cars in the collection. Um, so there you go. Now we have Rebecca's MIP Bull Diff Monster Beetle. Now this is a full runner, so as you can see, it's in not in great condition. It's a bit filthy, but that's exactly what it was for. This body hasn't even been painted. The stickers just went on because it gets driven, scratched and banged around. There's a few bodies for this. Uh, there's a the black edition body, which is in mint condition, which is what come with the kit. We added this afterwards. And then I have the Herbie body that I painted up for her. Now, apart from that, nothing's changed at all. The only thing I can think of since you last saw it is I've actually fitted hair scrunchies into the tires to improve it where uh, before you had just air. So uh, that's the only modification we've done. And it still runs on a sports tuned vintage motor. Um, so yeah, there's nothing really to do with this one. It just gets driven and enjoyed as it is. So now we have my daughter's fifth birthday present, a bright pink lunchbox. Now this may look like a standard lunchbox, but actually underneath it's quite highly modified. Uh, I can show you simply by doing this. If I point the camera at it, if I do this, can you see the front suspension does not adjust the wheel camber. It has the Ampro engineering wishbone front suspension fitted on it. Uh, also the rear Ampro engineering to offset the rear suspension. It's oil shocks all round. Even the gearbox slap is now got two oil shocks inside as well. So there's actually six oil shocks in this. It's also got a um, servo relocation. So the steering is really good now. 
and the servo is moved to a different position to give better travel so the actual suspension turns very well with a very strong servo so steering and driving is lovely it's got loads of extra weight added low down in the chassis to help it um, corner better and not roll over what else? I think that's pretty much it, but uh, she loves it, but she's not five anymore. I think it's got five written on it somewhere. She's, she's actually seven now. So uh, yep, she's had this for two years. Last thing I've done since uh, it was on the show before is I've changed to pink rims. These are from a Bush Devil, I think. I managed to pick them up to get it to match a bit more as it had the yellow rims, I think. So there you go. That's my daughter's lunchbox. It fully works and every now and again it goes out in the garden and she loves jumping it. That's why the body is looking a bit worse for wear, but that's the whole point. So uh, yeah, there you go, lunchbox. Now this is the CCO2 from Tamiya, pretty new, came out last year, I think. And this is the Mercedes-Benz version. They're about to bring out the Unimog version, um, same chassis, different body and things like that. Um, this one is slightly modified. I've put different tires on it. It's got brass or hubs, and also I changed the links as well. It's got uh, metal links, if I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I changed it all to metal links, yes. Uh, apart from that, it's got a sound box in it as well, and it's got a Fusion Hobby Wing motor uh, ESC combo all in one in it. I drive this a lot on the trails, so it's had a bit of a hard life. There's a good few videos where I've driven it in too much water and damaged it and then fixed it again. And we went on a massive, great big long walk with it where I overheated it and ripped all the electronics out of it. So it's changed quite a lot. Highly capable, way more than you think, and a brilliant trail truck. Really, really good, highly recommend it for a trail truck. Obviously, it's not gonna be a TRX4 by scale, but it will outperform what you think from a Tamiya uh, 4x4 truck. I do like the G-Wagons myself, but some people obviously are put off by them. But the other versions that are coming out, and you can change the body on them as well, the scale is lovely, and I'm a big fan of this. So I can recommend them, double thumbs up for sure. Um, it's looking a little bit tatty. I'm starting to lose a few stickers, so I need to fix that. But it's holding up pretty well considering how much abuse. I put some uh, metal window wipers on it as well. And the sound box, I don't know. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. But uh, there we go. So that's my CCO2. This is the predecessor to the CCO2 Benz that I just showed you. This is the CCO1, and this is a Defender 90 kit body. Big fan, why? Well, I love the Defenders and I would really have a Defender myself if I could, but Rebecca hates the agricultural side of it. So uh, the compromises, hopefully we'll be able to get a Defender 2 once they've come down a little bit as the depreciation kicks in. So that's the compromise. But personally, I would love to have a Defender 90 just like this. Maybe, maybe when the channel picks up a little bit as we only have one car in the family at the moment. But uh, yeah, love it. Really Really nice and the kit model looks brilliant they actually did a fantastic job of getting it to look just like the, uh, the actual car itself now this it's full of mud uh, I need to give it a bit of a clean I wiped it down but really I need to uh, take all the electronics out of it and wash the body it has a light kit in it so that'd have to come out because they're not waterproof but I really like it. This is nowhere near as capable as the CCO2, but this is still a fun trail track. If you're just going for a walk and you've got a little bit of gravel, this is fine for that, but don't expect it to be crawling up rocks and things like that. It just doesn't have the uh, clearance and obviously the suspension and things like that are just not there as well as the wheels and tires that it has are very scale and they look great, but they're not, not exactly uh, high performance tires. That's for sure. But there we go. That's the Defender 90. I painted it in my favorite metallic blue from Tamiya and uh, I'm really chuffed with it. It came out really well, but I did put in some serious hours and the stickers that you normally get for the arches and the bumpers, I didn't bother. I actually masked off and painted them up and I can highly recommend if you're gonna do one of these, to do that because the stickers just don't work around the bumpers very well so spend the time and take the uh, the effort to mask them off and they just look so much better so there you go that's my defender 90. now this is one of the cars that kind of kicked off the channel and it's the tto2b and uh, neo scorcher edition now it doesn't look like how it did originally now this was my son's car 
and I basically modified the living daylights out of it and swapped out nearly everything and completely ruined it for him. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. He actually has a pumpkin now, but I put in a brushless high powered, this car was bonkers fast. Then I changed everything and put all metal parts on it and it's actually turned into something completely different. It's now heavy, very, very fast, so not that great around the track, but it looks the part, the um, every modification I've fitted to it. I dread to think how much money I've put into this. Uh, it's got a hobby wing brushless system in it that's pretty decent, and loads of metal parts. Some of them are actually quite difficult to get now, and it's just so heavy, it's just not the thing to do. But hey, we have to do one every now and again to just throw all the bits at it. It does need a strip down and rebuild. I actually have got a reinforced chassis for it, so I will do that because I'm not gonna drive it anymore, as well as I need to take the electronics out of it and put that into something else, a bit more practical, and then I'll just fit normal electronics in it. And it's really just turned into a bit of a shelf queen, and people are very interested in it due to the amount of modifications that's had. It's even got metal gears from the pinion all the way to the hubs is full metal. Everything, the pinion, the spur, the prop, the diffs, the whole diffs, the internal diffs, um, the diff cups, their oil as well, the drive uh, shafts, down to the hubs and then the hexes are all metal. So this can take a lot of power. Now, the advantage is that makes it much stronger, but it does make it a bit more noisy. So it's quite noisy for when it runs. But um, the only thing I need to change, I think, have I done the universal? Do you know I've done it? I've actually changed them. It's got universal uh, shafts, front and rear as well. So I dread to think how much I've spent on this, but it's just one of those things you get carried away and you do. Uh, I'm not too keen on these um, adjustable links. They are a little bit sloppy, so make of it what you will. It does look the part, I must admit, but at some point I need to give it a bit of a love and strip it down and rebuild it. Because um, it did get driven quite a lot at first, but now not so much. So this is a manta ray that was gifted to me about a year ago by a gentleman called Mark. He sent me a whole letter on it. It was very kind of him. And this is all the history of this car and all the experiences he had with it back in the day. He took it racing and he's had it for a long, long time, but he decided he wanted to gift it to me. I'm going to fully restore it. Um, I really like it every now and again, maybe once, twice a year, I get a car sent to me gifted with a whole history behind it of how it was driven back in the day and the experiences that person had. And I love to try and keep the letters with the cars because at some point I want to frame the letters and have them with the restored cars. So it's like the history of that car. And that to me is really interesting and it's what brings them alive. So this is sitting patiently in the restoration pile. I have got all the body, I bought a load of bits and pieces for it, but I just need to restore it completely. Um, I may do it the same blue, just to give it a bit of a heart back to what it was originally. Um, but I'd like to have the Manta Ray, because then obviously I've got the Super Manta Ray, so they kind of go together as well. So that is a well-used, well-loved, and uh, a great backstory to it. Um, I think I did a video on this one, I'm not too sure. Um, where I actually went through the whole story. I think I did. It should be in the back catalogue if you want to check it out. And that is a Manta Ray. Another car that came in last year, and that's this, the Comical Ivanti. Now, I, to be fair, I got this on the channel purely for content, and I thought I would then sell it on, but I actually really like it. If anything, I like this more than the Aero Ivanti and the Ivanti Mark II. It drives really well. It was the first four-wheel drive Comical, so it was nice that they went to the trouble to do that, and I like the wheel modifications, and I think they got the body and the cockpit and the driver really well so i was uh, super chuffed with it it's fun to drive it zooms around it pulls wheelies and things like that so it's staying and it obviously then fits into my whole ivanti collection so that is no more to say about it it's all ball raced but it's got a sports tuned in it as far as i don't know it's just got a silver can in it um i haven't actually modified it in any way whatsoever apart from bearings 
but uh, I really liked it and I kind of fell in love with it so it stays in the collection. Also the new drivers they're really good because you can actually get quite a high level of detail on them very easily without loads and loads of work so I think that was a brilliant idea by Tamiya so the face is separate so it's easy to paint and then you clip the helmet around and the eyes and everything the stickers so you can actually get a very good looking driver without having to be super uh, good with a paintbrush next we have the Avanti Mark II not that keen on it but obviously it's part of my Avanti collection yeah it doesn't really do it for me not much to say about it yes it's fully ball raced but then most of my well, all of my cars pretty much are ball raced they're all it's fully functioning and i've driven it it's okay i put it around the track there's a whole build video and a painting video on this car if you want to go check it out um, from that point of view but again didn't really fall in love with it but it completes my Ivanti collection so that's why i have it can't really say any more than that so let's just move on <laughs> So we now move on to a non-box art Avanti 2001. I have a brand new body set for this with the decals, the body and everything. I have the correct driver. The actual chassis on this car is in really good condition. It's just it looks a bit naff with this body. The body comes from a different Avanti 2001 that I had that I sold on and I actually took the body off this and swapped it knowing that this body is only temporary. So I actually made this car look worse for a while until I actually get around to painting up the body and then it will look lovely. Um, it's in really good condition. I just had a new bumper on it. All nice underneath. You don't really find many good condition Avanti 2001 ones don't ask me why oh, a lot of people struggle with the decals around here as well so i need to be really careful because i have a proper set of decals um, this is my favorite Ivanti, personally the 2001 i like the different body design also there's things on this car that are very difficult to get and it's probably one of the hardest cars to restore these white rims are impossible to get hold of the drivers are very difficult because they mount differently so they have extra tabs so they're different to all the other Ivantis. Um, from that point of view it has plastic shocks these shocks are actually quite difficult to get hold of as well as if you've got damaged bits at the front also the bumper on this is not the same as all the other Avantis so really hard to find a good bumper it actually shares the bumper with the Vanquish, um, the, yeah, Vanquish and the VQS um, so getting one of these it's a lot easier now to get a bumper because of the VQS re-release but uh, it's not exactly the same it's fractionally different but it's still you know you can still swap them over and it's close enough it's only an internal part that's fractionally different but uh, getting bumpers was really difficult for these as well um, so yeah it's my favorite Ivanti I love the decals and I love the extra body changes as well and it's slightly longer I think as well from a wheelbase point of view so there you go that's my uh, not finished like so many others Ivanti 2001 now we get on to another car that I am so happy to have in my collection as they are so difficult and so expensive to get hold of especially when you're trying to get a really good one and that is the Dynastorm and this one was never never run never been used still got its original body that I need to paint uh, I need to be careful with this it's getting a little bit scratched over the years uh, I need to get it finished I need to go around and just polish up the edges a little bit but it's complete uh, it has everything exactly as it should do it's immaculate it doesn't have a mark on it um, also it's got an active power active active power acto power pink motor with the sticker one so I've got a few of these so uh, I put it into this car. I can't remember if it came. I don't think it did. I think I fitted it into this one. I was, when I got it, missing this uh, ESC plate, but I was uh, lucky enough to find someone on the channel, a viewer on the channel had one, so I managed to pick up that from them. Beautiful high caps, but in mint condition. The tires need to be replaced. The rear spike round tires shares the rear tires the same with the Evo. These round spike tires, I get the feeling the reason that Tamiya aren't re-releasing them and they've moved to the square ones is I think they've got a fundamental issue where they delaminate, the sides delaminate from the tops because this car had never been run and had brand new tires, but they'd all split all the way around. Also, I've seen that on Evo as well. So I think these tires have a, an issue and maybe that's why Tamiya don't do them anymore. They moved on to the square blocks and they've actually changed them. I don't know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Comment below, let me know what you think. Have you had a set of round tires that have split? So I was lucky enough to find these brand new ones to put back on this car as well. Uh, apart from that, the rims are all original 
and everything else is too. So I must get this up and running and I need to get it painted. But I don't like the box art, so I will change to go to a different color. Uh, I'm not too keen on that blue. Maybe I'll do my favorite metallic blue with the black. I don't know, we'll see. But I need to get on and get it done because all it's doing is sitting gathering dust. And it's a beautiful example that needs to be up on the wall, so. This is my Tamiya Vanquish that I fully restored back on the channel. It has original electronics in it. Now, I restored this when there, no, there was no VQS, so it took me ages to find the correct wheels. There's a lot of these that they break very easily, so I did a full restoration on this stripped down rebuild. I was lucky enough to find a brand new chassis that is vintage. Everything on this car is vintage. Um, so yeah, it took me ages before we got the Riri, so the bumper is correct, the chassis is correct, the wheels are the correct ones, everything on this is exactly from a vintage one, so I'm really chuffed. The only thing that's not is this body is aftermarket, uh, the decals are not original, but I do have a set of Vanquish decals, so at some point I will put a new body, I think I've even got a new body for it. So I'll just put the correct Tamiya body on it, not an aftermarket one, and I'll use the correct decals um, because I didn't have them at the time. So there you go, that is my Vanquish. And it's crazy fragile, so I don't drive it. Um, I've already broken parts on it, just moving it around and putting it down. The uh, G11 part on the back of this is original and it's all in one piece, but it's about the second or third one I've had on this car. Just from the weight of it sitting, they crack. So there you go, that's my Vanquish. Another car I'm really proud to have in the collection is this, an original Egress. Not a re-release, this is the original one and it's in beautiful condition with its original body and everything. It's got a Technigold motor in it. Um, it's in beautiful condition, as you can see. It's got no uh, damage whatsoever. And the arms are actually really nice. It's done very little use whatsoever. So I was very chuffed to get this on the show and uh, add it to the collection. So that is my vintage egress. And I saved the big boys for last. This monster is an Agrius by Tamiya. It's a huge metal chassis monster truck. Absolutely massive. Now I've done a few changes to it. I did the body in blue to red with the black inserts, which is different to box art, but I'm a big fan of this blue, so that's why I did it. And I fitted club wheels, and it should have come with these because it, the, it works much better with the scale uh, of the truck versus the ones that come in the kit. But you can't just get club wheels and bolt them on. It's a bit more complicated than that. Um, you've got to get adapters or change the actual um, like drive shafts inside because they're not quite the same uh, hub mesh. Why they didn't keep the same hub mesh, I honestly don't know. But there you go, so I'm a big fan of it. I haven't done too much to it uh, modification wise. Uh, the only thing I did differently apart from changing the color is I left the back alone. It has obviously four wheel steering as well. Um, I left this section in where normally you're supposed to cut it out, but a lot of people say to leave it and they are correct. If you are building one of these and you're lucky enough to find one of these because they're getting a bit rare, uh, don't cut all this section out because it leaves it much weaker. Just do what I've done and just cut it down lower here. You're supposed to cut all this red section out all the way around. Don't do that because um, it's very heavy and jumping is what it's all about with these and they drive just like mini monster trucks. So I can highly recommend one. It's got dual motors. I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually running two vintage Kurosho 550 motors in it. Don't ask me why, I don't know. I need to sort those out for some brushed ones at some point. Um, but there we go, that is my Agrius. And I saved the best for last. This is a monster truck that changed everything. This is what created the RC monster truck genre, and that is the Clod Buster. Now this is an original one because there's no way I would do this to it. This is the Super Clod Buster. This was a re-release. Basically, I've modified the life out of this one. The only thing that's still original are the rims, the tires, the axles, and the body, everything else, the whole chassis is completely changed. And that's why you can kind of do things like this, <laughs> where you can't with the original. I have steering is now done on axle. So I have servos front and rear, so it's got dual steer. 
Um, yeah, it's a bit of a monster right now and it's beautiful to drive and jump. This thing jumps amazingly. I've also widened the stance so that it's got full clearance regardless of the axis of the body and what's going on. Even if the steering is turned, it doesn't actually hit the body. So it is super wide now. And jumping this, it jumps. And if you film this jumping and then you match it next to a full real scale monster truck, they act just the same. It's brilliant. They bounce the same, they, they turn and the way they move. Um, so I'm a big fan. But as you can imagine, I've removed most of this, so much so, I actually have created another clod in the background. This is Franken clod. So this is all the parts left over from this one. And then I've been slowly adding axles and things like that from one car and another and another. So that's why it's called Franken clod. It's almost there. All I've got to do now, I think, is put, get some wheels and tires, a couple of servos and a body. And I've basically got a whole second clod. It's actually running Traxxas oil shocks already. So it's got, even this has got some hop ups on it because I removed them from this one. This has got some uh, Schumacher racing uh, shocks in it. So I moved the Traxxas ones onto here because obviously this is a whole different chassis. So the shocks are in a completely different size and in different location. So I was going to have one pretty stock clod and then one highly modified one so at some point this one will come to life main thing is the tires and rims are quite expensive so i'm hoping to pick up some more cheap ones at some point because obviously i bought a whole new set for the agrius as well so then buying a third set for this one can get a bit expensive but there you go that is everything in the collection as of 2021 from my tamia Whoa, this is going to be a long video. If you watch the whole thing, I take my hat off to you because it's been a long one. But I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see any of the videos for any of the cars that you saw on the channel, go check out the RC Kicks archives. They're there. You can search through it and you'll find all the build videos. There's like 330 odd videos now in the RC Kicks collection. So thanks very much. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one, Whew, which will be in a year. So I'm not doing this again. <laughs>